Hello everyone, here's everything you need to know about the upcoming winter event. This seasonal event returns to the game this week and will last just over a month. You'll be able to win some brand new buildings, including the main prize of the 4x6 Chalk Lottery. At level 11, you'll be able to choose between one of two options, Ted's Chalk and Katibo Candy, as per the names on the front of the factories. They both produce the same rewards, but different amounts. Ted's gives up to 28% attack and 8% defense for attacking armies, 4 forge points, 32 goods, and 3 fragments of the Nutcracker Guardhouse, while Katibo Tebos will give up to 7% attack and 34 defense for attacking armies, 14 forge points, 10 goods, and the same 3 fragments. To simplify all the numbers, this means that Ted's will be more focused on goods and attack, while Katibos is more defense and forge points. The other new building is the 2x2 Nutcracker Guardhouse, which needs 200 fragments to build. You can get 3 of these fragments daily from a chocolate lottery, so you'll get one about every 67 days for free. You can also get fragments for the guardhouse from the event pass. It provides up to 5% attack and 7% defense for attacking armies, 3 forge points, and 2 fragments of mass self-aid kits, which need 30 fragments to assemble. As per usual, there is an event pass for 1200 diamonds. Editing Uber here, it used to be 1200 diamonds. As of a post on the beta forums on the 24th of November, Juber, the beta community manager, has confirmed that the event pass will now cost $14.99 US, or an equivalent cost in other currencies, rather than being able to purchase it with diamonds. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, this change is horrible, and based on some other spoilers on beta, there will be some more changes that will make certain things only purchasable for real money. To keep this short, I'm extremely disappointed, and I'll be talking more about this in my event reaction video coming out soon. And back to the video. And this event brings something brand new to the event pass that makes it much more valuable. Chocolate Lottery Selection Kits. You can get two every four levels towards the end of the event pass if you purchased it. That's huge if you're planning on spending diamonds to get extra chocolate lotteries. The event pass also will give massive amounts of fragments for the Nutcracker Guardhouse and some exclusive avatars that I'll talk about later. This is probably the most tempting event pass so far, especially if you want more than one chocolate lottery, but I'll leave the purchasing decision up to you. Also, remember to claim your prizes manually after winning them to get them sooner. If you forget to collect them, you'll still receive them at the end of the event. In terms of the normal grand prizes you can win for free though, you'll also have the opportunity to win some cars for the popular winner trains. The event minigame is similar to the one it's been for the past few years, where you can spend 10 stars to open one of 18 random presents, and they are random. There's no secret pattern to where the prizes are hidden. Scattered among the prizes are a shuffle present that will reshuffle all the prizes on the board, a C2 present that lets you see two unopened presents, a times 2 present that doubles the next prize you win, the daily special, and a calendar key. For every prize you open, you'll receive a match that can light between 1 and 3 houses, and for every 20 houses, you'll receive the next grand prize. Whatever you do, don't forget to spend your matches, otherwise you will miss out on the grand prizes. Moving on to the event calendar's rewards, there are a whopping 32 days worth of doors you have to open. You can win the keys for each day from playing the event, but that will use a lot of your event currency to try and find them, and with the great daily specials we'll be getting, I'd recommend not doing this. You can also win parts of the key from daily challenges, on average 1.8 parts per day, so if you choose the key daily challenge every day of the event, you'll receive about 11 additional keys. If you do manage to complete the calendar, you'll receive the calendar collection reward of 2 chocolate lottery selection kits, 100 fragments of a nutcracker guardhouse, 200 forge points, 300 goods, and a portrait of Nicholas. And a partridge in a pear tree. It was a lot easier to get the Halloween events calendar reward, but I would not bank on getting the calendar reward for free. Last year we had the reindeer sleigh as part of the winter event, However, this year it's been replaced by a similar mechanic called the Elves Workshop. When you win the daily special, C2, or Shuffle presents, you'll also receive an elf. Going to the Elves Workshop, you can then choose between one of two prizes, or both, to be added to your collection. You can shuffle your prizes if you don't like the one you have. The ninth present will even be doubled once you claim the prizes. Sounds great, right? However, the prizes cost a staggering 3,000 diamonds to purchase, so depending on your luck with the prizes you choose, you may or may not have a collection of prizes that's actually worth that amount. When you shuffle the prizes, the diamond costs get progressively more expensive until you choose a prize, at which time it resets to the original 20 diamonds. It shuffles the prizes between a random prize pool, and by my best attempt, these are the prizes that I've seen appear as potential choices. So there's some pretty good ones out there, such as the three Winter Bakery, Winter Train, or even Winter Canal kits. However, let's talk about what you can get for free. You should be able to win the main event building without spending diamonds, as long as you're able to get some event currency from incidents. You'll also be able to win several awesome daily specials from this event. As usual, you'll want to save up all of your event currency until you see a daily special that you like, and then spend it all on that day to try and win that prize. The daily specials include Winter Bakery, Canal, Spire, and Train Kits, as well as the cars for the trains. You'll also be able to snag some renovation kits, and even Tactician Tower Kits. It seems like Sentinel Outposts also 
might be available, but their upgrades will not. The list of daily specials was adjusted slightly coming into live, so some of this list could have changed for better or worse. The one building that didn't appear in the beta list was the Slay Builder, which is one of my favorites, so it looks like if you wanted some, you'll have to rely on the Antiques dealer. This event also brings five brand new portraits. The first two on the left are available for free from the quest line, the next two from the event pass, and the final one as the calendar collection reward. Also, don't forget that this event brings back the snowy city background. It will start snowing whenever you complete an event quest or open a present in the event. Just as a warning though, the snow animations can cause lag on lower end devices, so if you get any stuttering while playing the event this winter, you can try turning off animations and settings to disable this effect. If you are able to see it though, it gives a unique look to your city that we don't see in any other event. And with that, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I'll link both the official announcement and the fan wiki page for this event in the description. If you stayed till the end, you might be interested in my video where I uncover the secret Progressive Era bonus questline, which you'll see on screen. See you next time!